Okay, uh, let me get your attention and we'll, uh, we'll begin. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Hope uh, everyone's doing well. Um, so uh, on Wednesday, we, uh, we had done an example of, you know, some Bayesian inference by hand. Um, we also talked a little bit about uh, Monte Carlo integration. So, um, so I'll just write earlier, we had Monte Carlo integration. And the idea is that the expected value of the expected value of some function h um, applied to a random variable x, where x is defined by the um, PDF f, this is equal to the integral of h of x times f of x dx over the, uh, the domain of x. And this can be approximated um, basically as the mean of h of x j, okay, where x j is drawn from f, okay, x j is a large sample drawn from, from f, and, and so in R, this is basically going to look like, um, you know, x is going to be some R, R function, okay, R, I'm going to just call this R distribution, okay, so this is uh, a random sample um, and then our estimate, our Monte Carlo integration estimate is going to be mean of h of x. Okay, and that's that's kind of where we left off. And I pose this question, um, you know, this works well, especially if the f of x, the posterior distribution that we're dealing with, is some nice function, like the beta distribution, which is the case if we're dealing in the kind of beta binomial situation, or, uh, you know, in your homework, you have other examples where you have an exponential and a gamma, or maybe it wasn't exponential, maybe it was Poisson and a gamma, and the posterior distribution is another gamma distribution, things like that, okay? R is able to generate random numbers from those distributions. And I said, well, what do we do if we don't have one of these functions in R to just generate random numbers from a particular distribution? What can we do, right? So, um, Uh, so what can we do if we do not have a function in R that will generate random values from uh, our distribution? Okay. Uh, or in other words, if I E F or you know our PDF F. you know, does not belong to, you know, some family like the exponential or, you know, some other probability distribution, a family of probability distributions, right? Uh, 
Okay. And so this will be kind of the theme for the next uh, several lectures, uh, the idea of generating random values from different dist distributions. Now, we are going to talk about generating random values from things that R can already do, like the exponential distribution, like the normal distribution, you know, all of these things that are already built in, but at least now we'll get a little bit of a sense of, uh, and it's, it's technically not how R does it, but a little bit of sense of how we could generate some of these things, and we'll also talk about how to do it for kind of these, for non-standard distributions as well, okay? So this will be... Um, Okay, the theme for the next few lectures, generating values, random values from dis different distributions. Okay, and, and that's an important thing because as we show, as we have shown, to do something like Monte Carlo integration, we have to be able to generate random values from a specified distribution. Okay, and so the uh, the first method that we're going to cover this is kind of the um, uh, I don't know our default method is going to be the inverse CDF method. I guess maybe um, before we even get into that. We're, all of these things are going to start off with the assumption that we can generate values from the random uniform distribution, okay? So, um, So we're going to assume that we're able to generate values from the random uniform. This is um, this is a non-trivial thing, okay? Um, so we we often just say uh, u comes from uniform zero one. Uh, you know, for us, with R, we use R unif. Okay, this is the uh, the function that that we have, and we're going to just kind of assume that this function exists and this works for us. Um, it used to be that when you took a Monte Carlo methods class, you would spend a lot of time talking about this initial thing, generating values from the random uniform. Um, and then um, over the decades, uh, we kind of, um, it feels like the problem has become a solved problem, you know? Uh, and, and we now have what's um, basically almost all the computers, I don't know about all the computers, but a lot of computer programs use what's known as the Merson twister, okay? So R uses and you can specify different um, um, generators, but uh, but this is this is what it used and uh, you can download the actual paper that uh, that describes the Merson Twister, but it's quite complex and I had a hard time understanding it. It involves like shifting bits, which um, I don't know. It's not easy to, uh, to grapple, okay? Uh, so R uses the um, Merson Twister. Um, kind of old school methods, old school methods that have now been completely replaced by the Merson Twister. Um, uh, I can't even remember the name. 
uh, I'm going to say random numbers, linear congruential something, something. I don't even have the internet, so. Please connect. <coughs> Let's see if this linear linear congruential generator. This was kind of the the old fashioned method, and there was kind of this this way where you would um, start with some number and you would uh, add something and multiply it by something and take the mod uh, modulo of it. Uh, you can look up, there's some good, um, what do you call it, uh, videos on YouTube that describe this, okay? And, uh, and they had some, so yeah, it's called the uh, linear congruential generator, okay? This is easy to understand. This one's hard to understand. Okay, so courses used to talk a lot about the linear congruential generator, talk about properties of uh, random uniform number generators and things like that, and we we would use, we used to spend time talking about stuff like this. Okay, but then the Merson twister came along. This was you know back in the '90s and and um, and it just kind of outperformed everything, okay? And it did much better than uh, all of these older methods. And everybody, all the software kind of switched to this, and we've accepted it and just said, okay, this works now, okay? Um, and we don't try to explain it or teach it. It's just kind of like, I don't know if anybody has ever tried to, uh, like do you guys know how the square root button on your calculator works? Okay, no, right? But, uh, like, do we care? Probably not, right? We know what a square root is, okay? And we understand the function of a square root, and, and, we, and we go with it, you know? They used to teach in, um, in school how to calculate a square root by hand, okay? And there was a method that you, you know, you plug in two, and there was some method to calculate. You can look up on YouTube, taking the square root by hand. And it's, it's, it's like worse than long division, right? So you had long division, I don't know, what, fourth grade or something like that, third grade? And you know you learned all of this, you had to, the, the divisor and the dividend and all of this stuff. Um, and it, it's like a, a, a far more painful thing, okay? But now we just say, okay, well the calculator can take the square root for us. No, I don't think anybody knows how to take a square root by hand these days, right? If I said, what's the square root of three? I don't think anybody can do it by hand other than like this weird guess and check system where you're like, okay, let me try plugging in one point this and, and something. Um, but I think we're okay. And this is kind of where we are with random uniform generators as well, okay? We've, we've come up with this hard to understand method, the Merson Twister, um, but it's excellent, it performs well, and we just kind of accept it as this thing that works, okay? And, and if you're okay with accepting it as such, we can kind of just move on and go on with the course. Now, I don't know if we're going to reach a point where even the stuff I'm teaching now about the inverse CDF method and whatever, you know, we're going to just say, okay, all of this stuff works, <laughs> we're just going to keep moving on. It, it's, um, at some point, we just say, well, these things work, and we've accepted it as such, and we've moved on, right? Like, nobody knows how to smelt iron and, I don't know, make <laughs> things. But we've moved on as if this technology just matter-of-factly exists. Um, okay, but anyway, um, so that's, that's our big assumption. We're assuming that we can generate um, random uniform values, okay? All right. Um, so let's, we're going to start off with the inverse CDF method. All right, well, let's first talk about what is the CDF. 
CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. Okay, good. And what are the properties of a CDF? It's always increasing, yeah. Okay, so in general, what's its domain? The domain is technically negative infinity to infinity, okay, in general. Okay, the general CDF can go from negative infinity to infinity. What is its range? Zero to one, okay? Yeah, all right. So the CDF, um, okay, let's contrast this to the PDF, okay? So the PDF is what? Stands for the probability density, right? Function, okay? And this is, we only have densities for continuous distributions, okay? And then we have what? We have the PMF, and this is the probability mass. And this is for discrete, right? So if we have a PMF, do we have a CMF? No, OK? Both the PMF and the PDF, when you take the uh, cumulative, is the cumulative distribution function. So it's the CDF, OK? So you have a PDF and a PMF, but there's only the CDF. There's no C, CMF, okay. Um, okay, so probability density function, what does this look like for the normal distribution? This is what everybody pictures when you think of normal distribution. It looks like this, right? This is, this is the normal distribution PDF, okay? What's the normal, so this is the normal PDF, What's the normal CDF? What does this look like? Yes, OK. It looks like a logistic curve, but we call this the normal, normal ogive. Or I, don't, I don't know. OK. So, ah, it's hard to draw, OK? But I think you guys know what I'm trying to draw, OK? <laughs> All right, you guys know what I'm trying to draw? This, we might call this the normal. I think it's called the normal ogive. Now I'm like paranoid that I've called this the wrong thing. Normal ogive. Uh, oh, it's also called the error function. Error, er, uh, normal ERF. Also called this thing. What do we call this? The ERF. Uh, probably. Um, it's also called the ERF, error function. Okay. And uh, and how do we define a CDF? What is the definition of the CDF? So if the PDF is f of x, okay? The CDF we call capital F of x, and this is equal to what? The integral from negative infinity to x of f of, yeah, yeah, usually we have to change the letters, and I think traditionally we use t, but yeah, p would be fine, okay? f of some other letter, d, that other letter that you've chosen, not x because the x in the function has to come up to here, right? So it's just the cumulative thing. Uh, this is for continuous. And if it's discrete, f of x would be what? The sum from, I guess, uh, I, don't, uh, how do, I don't know the notation now. <laughs> uh, f of... I guess t sub j 
uh, from j equals uh, 0 to oh gosh is it j equals x? I don't know I'll just say x here okay from whatever if you've enumerated the uh, the outcomes okay um, okay and this is this is kind of for a discrete case all right and so um, the property is that the CDF always outputs from zero to one okay so here's it here's the question okay So we've got, um, let's just talk about the normal distribution, okay, normal distribution, and we've got the CDF, and it looks like this, okay. All right, so if I say um, the quantile, quantile Q is equal to 0 0.5, and I ask what value Z, what is the value Z, so that um, probability um, that Z is less than, you know, little Z is equal to 0 0.5, what is this Z? All right, okay, so let's just go with the standard normal, okay? So what is that Z, right? So we'd say zero, right? Because at zero, the area to the left is 0.5, right? So Z is equal to zero, okay? Let's see if you guys remember your normal quantiles. Okay, so if I say the normal quantile is Q is equal to... 0 0.9, what is a Z? You guys don't remember this things? 1.28? 1.28, right? No? Are you guys going to just break my heart here? Okay. All right. Uh, zero point, you guys don't remember any of these. 0 0.95? 1.645, good, all right, okay. Great. Okay, so here's the question. What is the probability that Z is less than 1.28? It's not a trick question. 0 0.9, right? Okay, what's the probability that Z is less than 1.645? 0 0.95, okay. And, um, okay, so what we have, all right, is we have a correspondence from basically the domain of X into some range between 0 and 1, okay? And we can take advantage of this and we can use the inverse function to then go from the range 0, 1 to the domain of x, okay? So the inverse CDF of the normal, okay, what would, so if this is the CDF, what, would, what is the inverse CDF? You guys remember how to, so f of x looks like this, Okay. What does f inverse of x look like? It, yeah. So how? So you take the thing and you do this, right? You guys kind of remember something like that. Okay. So um, all right. So wh where should I start and end on my x-axis here? Zero. So at zero. Okay. And where am I at zero? Negative We're at negative infinity, okay. And at one, where am I? Positive, Positive infinity, okay. And where do I cross the uh, x-axis? 
at 0.5. Okay, and we're gonna get something that looks. This is it's really hard to do. Okay, so I don't know something that looks like this. Okay, all right, and we can kind of draw um, something that looks like this. All right. Is that okay? So here's my f inverse function, and that was so hard to do, so hard to draw, that I'm going to just copy it into the next picture slide because I don't want to, I, I didn't even do a good job, but it's hard, all right? And it's, okay, so this is what we got here, all right. So we've got the normal inverse function here, and it looks like this, all right? And what we have now is that if we let u be some value from uniform 0, 1, okay? So, you know, if, if u ends up being, um, I don't know, some number, okay, then the inverse value, f, the inverse CDF applied to u, okay, so u comes from somewhere between 0 and 1, all right, and this, this should cross exactly at 1 here, okay, then this will come from the normal distribution, okay, this value itself. So, um, so if u is uniformly distributed, f inverse of u will be normally distributed. Does that feel strange? Maybe? OK, so let's, let's just try this, all right? OK, um, what is the probability? Or, OK, what value? of u must I draw if I want it, if I want 90% um, of all random values of u, random values from uniform 0, 1 to be less than this U. It's like so redundant <laughs> that maybe we'll miss it. <laughs> okay? But what value of a random uniform value do I have to draw? So u is coming from the random uniform from 0 to 1. What value of u must I draw if I want 90% of all random values to be less than this u? 0.9, right? U has to be 0 0.9. Okay? All right. All right, now let's switch this. Okay, what value of z must I draw if I want 90% of all, I'll say, standard normal values so that is uh, normal 0, 1 to be less than this z. Okay, so what value of z do I have to draw if I want 90% of all values from the standard normal distribution to be less than this z? z would have to be 1.28, okay? And the relationship between u and z is that u equal to 0 0.9 and f inverse of 0 0.9 is equal to 1.28. Is that okay? And we can just plug in any other number, right? What value of u must I draw if I want 90% of all random u to be less than 0.5? Okay, u would have to be 0.5. Okay, what value of z must I draw so that, uh, what did I say, 50% of all random values would be less and z. So then z would have to be 0, okay? And what's the relationship between u and z? It's going to be um, f inverse of u is z. And that relationship, f 
f inverse if so if we let z equal to f inverse of u then um, z will come from the normal distribution you might have to just sit and think about this for a moment Okay, so this f inverse, this is the inverse CDF, okay? We also call it the quantile function. The inverse CDF is also known as the quantile function. Okay, so this is the uh, inverse CDF, also called uh, quantile function. What's that? Yeah, what is? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, okay. It's, uh, all right. Just, so the uniform, the uniform PDF, let's draw that first. Okay, the uniform PDF looks like what? We start at zero, we go to one, and I'm going to, I guess it, it just, it's at a height of one. Okay, so that, um, yeah, I go from here to here. Okay, what is the CDF? So we're basically, we're going to integrate basically 1 <laughs> from uh, 0 to x dt. So this is going to be, if we integrate this, this is going to just be x, right? So we're going to go from 0 to 1, and it's going to go like this, okay? So technically, it starts off, it goes off to negative infinity, Positive infinity, but it looks like like that. Okay, is that okay? Um, what would the inverse be? Okay, we're we're rotating it around the, the line um, zero one, so it ends up being it ends up being the same. Okay, and and so so this is why the uh, the questions feel so redundant when we just say. What value of u must I draw so that 90% of values are less than u? It's going to be 0.9. And that's, that's because if I plug in um, 0.9 here, I'm going to get back 0.9 over here. Okay. All right, but let's, let's, go back to, um, let's go back to this thing, okay? And so if, if I plug in 0.9, this is going to spit out... 1.28, okay? If I plug in, if u ends up being 0 0.9, then the corresponding z is going to be f inverse of u, and we're going to get 1.28, all right? And if you guys don't believe me, I can kind of demonstrate this with, with r, okay? All right, so here, let's just... Um, that not work? Why, why am I not getting? Okay, so here's my histogram of u, okay? Random values drawn from this, okay? Zero, and it, and it looks pretty uniform. It's going from zero to one. All right. Um, let's just take a look at, like, the first value of u, okay? The first value of u is 0.265, and I can say, okay, well, what what value of z would give me 0.265? So negative uh, 0.626, okay? Something like that, okay? And so I can actually just say z is going to be q norm of u. And if I, I plot the histogram of z, is the normal distribution, okay? Let me break straight to see. Okay? It's so there, there you have it. So U is generated random uniform. If we look at the histogram, it goes from zero to one. And here I'm just using Q norm, 
which is the inverse CDF function, okay, inverse CDF of normal distribution, okay, and we can see um, okay, and now we see that Z is normally distributed. Is that okay? All right, and in fact, this is how our norm works. Okay, our norm works by first generating a random uniform value and then plugging it into the inverse CDF. Okay, and, I'll, and let me just kind of demonstrate this. Okay, so if I do our unif ten, I'm gonna say let u be this, and we'll just print out u. Okay. Okay, so these are the 10 random uniform values that R prints, uh, R prints out, and I can just say, what is Q norm of U, okay? And it gives me these values here, all right? Meanwhile, if I say set seed one, are you guys, uh, are you guys able to see this? If I uh, ask for R norm, 10 values, R does this, a slightly weird thing, okay? But notice that, so all I did was I took random uniform, okay, so I got this value, and when I plug that into the Q norm, okay, the inverse CDF, it gives back 0.626, negative 0.626. And indeed, that's the first same value I get when I draw here. Okay, now R does this weird thing where it throws away every other value, but this 0.18364333 is right here, the next value, that um, R generates, okay, 0.18356 is, is right there, okay, uh, this one, okay, and the next one, um, 0.1595 is right there, and this one is right there, okay? So there's a direct relationship between kind of the random uniform values that R generates and the random normal values that it generates it also generates. For some reason it throws away kind of every other value from the random uniform. Um, I don't know why, but it does, okay? Um, and, uh, and so, so that's the inverse CDF. Is that okay? Does, this inverse CDF idea is a little, um, you know, make, maybe takes a tiny bit of uh, getting used to, okay? But it can uh, be generalized to any any probability distribution that has a CDF, okay? Uh, has a defined CDF function, okay? So um, we'll do a other example, okay? All right, and so let's do. Um, say for the exponential distribution. Okay. So we're going to say uh, for the exponential distribution, the PDF, okay, so recall the exponential distribution looks, uh, <coughs> what does the exponential distribution look like? What's the smallest value it can take? Yes, the minimum value for the exponential is zero, okay? And the maximum value? Plus infinity, okay? What do we, when do we use the exponential distribution? Waiting time, how much time it, it elapsed between random events, okay? How much time elapsed between random events? And all exponential distributions look, uh, shouldn't cross, okay? Look something like this, okay? They all uh, start here, and they kind of have this exponential rate of decay, all right? And um, the PDF uh, of the exponential distribution, I don't expect for you to have memorized, but I don't know. Maybe you will one day. I don't know what you guys are going to do after you graduate. Like, some of you might teach, okay, and some of you might work, and you never have to deal with the exponential distribution. Okay, I don't know. Or maybe you'll work in some place where you constantly have to use the exponential distribution, right? But maybe, um, you know, if you forget the PDF, that's okay, all right? You can look that up on Wikipedia, right? 
Um, what's harder to remember is um, the harder search. So the easy search is PDF of the exponential. You can go on Google, PDF, easy, easy, okay? Harder will be remembering which distribution you're supposed to use, but you might be able to say, uh, what distribution can I use for, I don't know, modeling wait times? And probably in the first few hits will be um, exponential, right? Um, but the hardest will be is if you just completely forget everything and that, that we can model things with random processes here. Okay, but anyway, so here's our PDF, okay? Now, we could cheat. And, uh, and we can ask for the CDF and we would get this, okay? Um, maybe, just maybe, I will make you um, integrate a PDF, a simple PDF, okay? All right, and so we're gonna say um, the CDF is gonna be the integral from zero to x of lambda e to the negative lambda t dt, okay? And, uh, and you would have to um, do the integral of this and, um, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm like drawing a blank here. <laughs> this is my worst. Uh... Okay, what do I do? Okay, so we're going to um, pull out lambda and then uh, the integral of e to the negative lambda t is this, and then I divide by negative lambda, right? Okay, and then we have to evaluate, okay, well, before, let me do that, and then, so this becomes uh, negative e to the negative lambda t, and we evaluate this from, I even forgot the notation, we evaluate this from t equal to zero to, how do I say this, t equal x? Do I write that up there? Okay, okay. And, um, okay, so when I do this, um, I'm gonna get e to the zero, so I get one, and then, wait, what, am I doing something wrong here? e to the negative lambda x. Oh, I just, I just did this backwards. I do this one first, and then I normally subtract off the one, but it becomes positive. Okay, there we go. All right, so we, <laughs> All right, mission accomplished. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, so this is our CDF, right? This is our CDF, and what we want to do, okay, is we want um, we want to take the inverse of this function, okay? To in invert this, do I still have time? I do. Okay. Um, so we have f of x is equal to one minus uh, e to the uh, negative lambda x, okay? And we want to, um, to find the inverse, right? Which is gonna be f, uh, uh, f inverse of u, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna set f of x equal to u and uh, rearrange to solve for x. Okay, all right, so I've got um, one minus e to the negative lambda x is equal to u, and I'm gonna just kinda switch some terms around. I got one minus, whoops, one minus u is equal to e to the negative lambda x, and I'm gonna take the log of both sides. All right, and I get negative lambda x, and I can take divide by negative lambda, Uh, is this, okay? All right, and so that gives me f inverse of u is minus one over lambda log of one minus u, and that's gonna equal x, right? And so um, what we can do now is if u comes from uniform zero, one, then uh, let x e equal f inverse of u, and uh, then x will come from 
the exponential distribution with parameter lambda. Okay. Now often, when you uh, see this, you will actually not see it written this way. Okay. Uh, we take advantage of the fact that um, if u is uniform 0, 1, okay, then the quantity 1 minus u is also exactly identical. We'll have the exact same distribution. Okay? If u comes from 0 to 1, then 1 minus u will also be randomly uniform from 0 to 1, right? It's just the opposite side. Okay? And so, um, so often we'll uh, rewrite f inverse of u to be negative 1 over lambda log of u. Okay? Put that equal. Because I guess that looks prettier than 1 minus u. Okay? No problem. All right, and then, and so again, I, let me just kind of demonstrate this that indeed this is what it looks like. with my last uh, 10 seconds of class, okay? So we're going to say um, u, we're going to ask for uh, 10,000 of these things, okay? All right, so let me just do uh, exponential, um, and I'll ask for 10,000, and we'll say, land, or 100,000, uh, rate equals, let's say, uh, zero, uh, 0 0.5, okay? And this will be... Um, X and we'll just do a histogram of X. Okay, so that's what that's what your histogram looks like here. Um, and if I do um, basically inverse X, which is going to be um, negative one divided by two times uh, log of U, where U is generated like this. Okay, then the histogram of inverse X should look exactly the same. Okay, and, and it, I think it does if we just add more breaks here. Okay. Uh, did, oh, I'm sorry. I have it, uh, I have it wrong here. Okay, so indeed, uh, they, they look very similar here. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll end here. We'll see you guys uh, on Monday. Have a good weekend.